Hello everyone, this is Cynthia of Cynthia Plans and today I'm filming a video about my 2021 goals and if you're new here, I am using the Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets. I mentioned this in my 2021 planner stock video and they're also a product that I used last year but if you're new to my channel, this has been my preferred goal setting system for now the second year. I really like the Power Sheets because of the really deep questions that they get into as far as the why behind you choose to set at certain goals and why certain goals are important to you and I have found that the questions and the way that they kind of let you work up to how you get to set goals before you just go ahead and put stuff on a piece of paper has been really truly insightful introspective and helpful to me it's the best set of work that I've seen so far and I have looked at other inserts before because I am using a ring system to see if there's anything on the market already that I could just incorporate into my E5 ring system since I am trying to be very intentional about trying to keep everything in one place and not have too many planners doing different things for my life but that for me where I'm at right now is just not feasible. So with that said, I went ahead and invested in the power sheets again for this year and I will be doing my tending list work in my 85 rings setup I did go ahead and make some custom inserts for myself that I can go ahead and use in my system since I'm looking at it every single day to keep on top of my different goals and habits and routines and just to do's that I have to do on a daily and weekly basis the easiest thing is to have the tending list front of mind in my A5 ring system, but I did want to go ahead and purchase the Cultivate What Matters planner for goal setting because I did find last year that the goal prep work was invaluable and I really wanted to do that this year since 2020 was a year of a lot of learning and unlearning and a lot of insight and self growth and discovery and everything like that. I really wanted to take the time and with all these different ideas swirling around in my head, be intentional about what I actually could focus on in the coming year. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead, intro the video really quick, and then we will jump into the goals that I chose to set for myself in 2021. So as I mentioned, the power sheets are very robust when it comes to asking specific questions about what worked in the last year, what sorts of things you want to say no to in the coming year, what sorts of things you want to say yes to, kind of doing a lot of visualizing and on a certain level manifesting of the life that is that you want to see for yourself in the next year or in the coming years. If the life that you want to live is going to take some time to work up to that, I think Really, if you're trying to live a fulfilled, well-rounded life, you spend your whole life trying to work toward that and that's a good thing. We should all be constantly striving to grow, improve, get better, and do more meaningful things with our life every single year of our life. So with that said, the prep work, as I mentioned, I found really invaluable last year, especially the parts that get into your legacy because for me, I've always looked at goal setting with the thought of what can I do that particular year or what can I do at this stage in my life and not necessarily ever had the forethought before doing the power sheets to be thinking about what do I want to do for myself right now that may make a better life for myself or for my son or you know ultimately help me get further toward the legacy that I want to have as I get into you know the later years of my life what can I do right now to get me there in the next 5 10 15 20 years and so this has been a really really powerful tool for me and if you haven't looked at the power sheets I think there actually still might be some available right now and they're pretty discounted I want to say they're maybe 25% off so if you're interested I would encourage you to check those out and go ahead and see if this is something that like you've never really gotten into deep goal setting before you've just been like I know I'm not feeling great so I want to exercise more or I feel like I always spend too much time watching TV I want to read more those sorts of things if it's been very a little bit more surface level like you know these things about yourself and you want to change them or you want to improve upon them then I would encourage you if you're looking to level up to look at something like the power sheets to help you get there so with the power sheets besides all the prep work when you're identifying your goals one of the other things that you do is identify a word for the year and this is a practice that I 
I had started before I started the power sheets, but the power sheets have definitely, as I get through the prep work, confirmed that whatever word is on my heart, on my mind at that time is, is pretty valid because it's just a whole body feeling of feeling like this is where, this is the momentum of the direction that I need to be going in. So last year I chose the word purposeful and for this year I chose the word vision because I left, I was left feeling very unclear, very confused, very unsure about what I wanted to do with my life going forward at the end of 2020. I had a lot of experiences that made me question the things that I was doing, the things that I had unconsciously been doing, the things that I unconsciously just had as a part of my life, either as part of routines or part of my norm. And I kind of, like a lot of people last year, I suspect kind of got woken up a little bit in some ways. And for some people that might have been in certain views or in certain routines that they had, for me, it really was about the hamster wheel that it felt like I had gotten to with my life where I just, you know, woke up, went to work, came home, did my obligations that I felt obligated to do or that I had gotten myself involved with at some point and couldn't even remember how anymore I got myself involved with them. And when all those things stopped around the middle of last year as we were really in the thick of the pandemic, it made me realize why am I doing these things? These things I'm not doing anymore and I don't miss them. So how can I make sure that once we do get back to a new normal that I don't fall into those same patterns of behavior again or those same patterns of comfort and ease again? So having all of that in mind, I really wanted to be thinking more long-term vision instead of just kind of, you know, being in survival mode versus thriving. I want to be more in a thriving mode. And I think to be in a thriving mode also requires a vision for what happens beyond the day-to-day. -day. So that was a lot, but for my goals for 2021 with the thought of vision in mind, I really want to commit myself this year to making steps towards goals that are going to help me get to what I see for my life in the next five to ten years. The first goal that I have on this list is to start and grow a business. So I have done, I've mentioned this before in other videos or in Plan With Me's, like I do virtual assistant work when the opportunity comes up or freelance social media marketing on the side for friends or people who need help. And I've also done some logo design before for a couple of friends in the planner community. And I've just kind of taken these opportunities as they come up when people ask me for them. And I usually never Never do more than whatever they ask me for. I never like look for another client after that project ends or anything like that because truth be told it was always really hard to do those things as kind of like a side hustle because I work full time but I also work a lot more than 40 hours because I'm salaried at my job and my job can be very demanding. Definitely my workload has increased in the last couple of years to the point of my job probably needing, not even probably, definitely needing to be more than one person but unfortunately that's not where we're at right now. There is only me and there's only a budget for me so it requires a lot of time while I'm on the clock but then sometimes even hours outside of what should be my normal schedule and so what I'm really committed to this year as part of starting and growing a business is also shifting my priorities that's another goal that I have on this list and shifting my priorities means not prioritizing the full-time job that I have over every other aspect of my life which means I stay on the computer later than I should or you know when I was working in the office staying in the office for another hour, hour and a half, past when I should have left already, all that kind of stuff. And so being mindful, shifting my priorities as one of the goals will help me feed into that second goal of starting and growing a business. So being more intentional about, yes, I can do social media marketing. Yes, I can be a virtual assistant. Yes, I can do some branding and logo design consultation or design, but like, what do I really want to do? What would make me happy? And so I really want to spend the next couple of months figuring out what business could I start that would make me happy, could make me a respectable amount of income to turn it into something that could eventually grow into a full-time business at some point and be something that would allow me more autonomy to make creative decisions for myself, but then also allow me to have a better schedule that gives me room to spend with my son and my husband a little bit more frequently with my family members and my friends and don't have to feel obligated to 
a certain schedule or expectations that I have at my full-time job right now because that's how the organization is set up but maybe if I work for myself I can create some more flexibility in my life so those are two goals shift priorities and start a business so the third one kind of is also an offshoot of the start a business but it's a little bit different and that's just create more and so create more is create more time to spend with my son creating things with him doing activities with him instead of just sitting there watching TV or whatever we might do creating more means creating more content on my social media platforms here on YouTube on my Instagram for my blog all those sorts of things because I as I was going through the prep work and you get into questions like what leaves you feeling impassioned and what feel, leaves you feeling really excited and I always feel really great after I create a piece of content and I get a really really great response from people either by having meaningful conversations with them or giving them an idea about something that maybe they didn't have before or teaching them something that they didn't know before I always feel really great after those interactions and maybe it doesn't even have to be a post that goes viral or anything like that that's not really what the goal Goal is here is to create more in the hopes of you know becoming some YouTube star or anything like that create more just so I feel like I'm contributing to this world in a way that helps other people and I'm not just taking I'm not just consuming on a regular basis I'm creating on a regular basis while also consuming so shift priorities start and grow a new business and create more the a next goal on my list is invest in the vision so as I mentioned my word of the year is vision and I'm committed to doing little things over the next couple of months in this year to help me reach that ultimate vision which I kind of wrote down in here put a little bit of it on my vision board to kind of manifest this this life for myself that I see myself living or that I could live in the next couple of years and so invest in the vision for me is about my financial goals so being so committed to this long-term vision that I get really disciplined about my financial accountability so making sure that I am saving more than I'm spending that the last credit card that I have that's been lingering for the longest time because I've not been disciplined enough to just get rid of it that this is a year I get rid of it and I get rid of all of my credit card debt so I can very aggressively save toward a home which is one of our goals in the next less than five years we're really hoping the next two to three years no more than two possibly but definitely making sure that I'm doing my part to help us along on that goal so my husband doesn't feel like he's saving the money and I'm spending the money kind of thing so making sure that it's really a partnership because while I do love our home it's been great I love my little space here it's small for us and we are definitely busting out the seams on what we have right now and we just see a bigger vision for ourselves so invest in the vision really is about getting serious about my financial goals so the next goal that I have on here is choose health and so choose health for me is about making sure that I'm choosing foods that make me feel good because as much as I love to go and have takeout a lot of times after takeout and truth be told we don't even eat fast food really when we do takeout that's not if I'm going to spend the money on an uber eats or doordash or something I'm not going to blow it on mcdonald's or wendy's or something like that or taco bell like we usually order from a local restaurant some sort of small business so we can help support our local economy and while I always feel super great about it and the food is always delicious as far as feeling great as far as supporting the small business I never feel good after the day after like it always makes me feel so sick because it's not it's not usually what I eat it's usually just a matter of convenience or like I said like oh I've got a taste for this kind of food or something like that and we get it and while it's always great to satisfy that craving when I feel bad then it sometimes can lead to well I'm already feeling bad and my son has this snack here so whatever I'm just gonna eat this snack that I normally wouldn't eat so making sure that I choose health I'm you know making Making sure that I'm choosing drinking 64 ounces of water all day instead of surviving on three cups of coffee because let's be real that has happened a lot during this pandemic I've been drinking water but not anywhere near as much water as I'm supposed to be drinking and I'm consuming caffeine like it's going out of style like it's never going to exist on this planet again so making sure that I choose health as far as exercising on a regular basis I like to exercise but I like I said by not shifting priorities by making sure that my whole life revolves around my full-time job first and then every other thing in my life second I sometimes don't have energy after a really long exhausting day of meetings and zoom calls and and, you know, departmental infighting about something or whatever it might be. And so making sure that I choose health as far as making sure that I 
feel well and that I'm taking care of my body first before everything else. So I've actually been getting up really early in the morning already, trying to get up at 5.45 to work out before, make that the first thing I do before my day even begins so that nothing else prevents me from making sure that I've exercised, that I've, you know, done something good for my body, that I have released some energy and that I'm starting the day with as best of a mindset as I possibly can to lead me through what will probably be challenging days here and there. The next goal on my list is to spend time with my people. That was another thing that was really at the forefront for me as far as things that I like I feel so great about after the fact. I always feel so good. I, I feel like I'm on cloud nine after I spend time with my people and whether that's my husband and son here doing awesome things and fun things with them or spending time with my family when we coordinate and make sure that it's safe to do so during the pandemic, whatever it might be, whether it's you know making time to do the occasional Zoom or FaceTime call with friends that I can't see in person right now, making sure that I spend time with my people because I dealt with so much social isolation in the last year, especially because I'm working from home right now full time. I really need to prioritize making sure that I set those times to socialize with other people, talk to them, check in with them, and make sure that we are checking out and looking out for each other because these are definitely hard times that we're living in and my family has been my rock and my support through this last year as difficult as it's been. So it's really important to me that we continue to spend time whenever possible. And so the last goal that I have on here, I actually only have seven goals for my yearly goals right now instead of eight. The power sheets recommend that you have eight goals and I just couldn't come up with an eighth goal that meant enough to me and I didn't want to put something on there just to say that I had eight things. And the seventh goal that I have on here is discover who I am. So like I said in previous videos and if you've been following me on Instagram, I just turned 30 last month and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to start a new decade of growth and self-discovery and healing and everything like that. I feel like the, as I'm sure many people who are in their 20s probably can relate to, I felt like the first half of my 20s was just like bouncing around from thing to thing and just kind of taking life as it were. And it was, it was great. I think it's so important that people do that. But it also meant that I started the later half of my 20s really getting into the work of, you know, who am I? How have the experiences that I've dealt with in my life shaped who I am, shape how I respond to things, shape uh, the decisions and how I approach decisions and everything like that that I might make and I really want to continue that journey of self-discovery in this next year. I had, you know, I'm someone who likes to be transparent. I was seeing a therapist last year before the pandemic started and once the pandemic hit, I decided to stop seeing that particular therapist because while overall it was a good experience, I didn't really feel like I had a good connection with her and so I'll be honest, the pandemic was just a convenient excuse to not so work with her anymore and stop seeing her but I am committed to trying to find somebody else that I think can help me through some of the healing that I need to do based on life experiences that I've dealt with you know making sure that I'm the healthiest person that I can be not only for myself but for my husband and our marriage and also my son and my relationship with him and all the people in my life that matter to me so I'm putting my best foot forward in my relationships with other people so self-discovery in that sense as far as who I am things I want to change about myself what things I I just need to learn to accept about myself because it's just how I am and also too on the other side of that is last year probably after all of the social injustice movement through protests and a lot of people were going live and posting on Instagram about different issues it really made me kind of put into context like my identity because I am someone who is of Puerto Rican and Dominican descent and I've lived my whole life in the United States I've had a very American experience but when people ask me where I'm from, I will say that, oh, I'm half Puerto Rican, I'm half Dominican. And while that's true ethnically, that's my background, ultimately, I'm someone who is an American that is my identity first because this is the whole culture that I've grown up in and lived in. But that said, I do want to explore my cultural identity a little bit deeper. I'm someone who unfortunately doesn't speak the language because my parents didn't teach it to me as a kid. And try as I might in high school and college, 
college to learn Spanish. I never really had great teachers, so it did not make me super motivated to learn the language. And so really in the next year, I want to try getting better at learning the language. I want to try to learn recipes from my mom and also my mother-in-law to learn a little bit more about my husband's culture. So my son has a more well-rounded understanding of who he is as a person as he gets older. Making sure that I read some books that kind of give some deeper historical context for me to kind of understand a little bit better as well because I did take Latin American humanities and history when I was in college and I learned so much and it was such an enriching experience that I really want to go deeper into that and learn a little bit more so I can feel a little bit more confident about you know where I came from you know who I am the people that came before me my ancestors everybody like that that helped shape me to become the person that I am today you know either directly or indirectly making sure that I'm spending a little bit more time on that because I really haven't up until this point and I don't want to rob myself of that opportunity to be learning a little bit more and have that full context but then like I said too to also give my son a more meaningful context for who he is because of the fact that I come from a background where my parents are from two different countries my husband is also in the same boat where his parents are from two different countries so really there are four different cultures besides the American culture that my son has to learn about and has to understand as part of his identity so all of that is kind of wrapped in that discover who I am goal and that is really something that I want to spend time on in the coming year and definitely pass this year but definitely start the work and the foundation for it in this coming year so I'm really excited about these things and I'll be sharing more about it on my Instagram that's definitely where I get more into the weekly daily nitty-gritty check-ins with stuff especially on stories I try to be pretty active on stories so if you're interested in seeing my progress on these things my instagram is always linked in the description and i would encourage you to follow me there if you want to learn more and see more about what i'm doing in the coming year so if you have set your goals for 2021 and you feel comfortable sharing any of them with me please leave them in the comments below if you're using power sheets i would also love to hear about your journey with power sheets if you're new to them if you've used them several years in a row any feedback that you have on the power sheets i'd love to know that as well so i wish you all the best on your goals for 2021 with that if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new here please consider subscribing thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video